environmental sustainability and upliftment of the general public's quality of life. Our mission to train competent scientists and professionals with passion for excellence in science, global in perspective, and committed to the service of the country. To develop environmentally sound, sustainable and cost-effective pest management programs and technologies to address the crop protection concerns of growers and farm holders. To disseminate scientific knowledge and provide technical assistance in pest management. The center is headed by a director, deputy director and division heads supported by competent staff composed of scientists conferred by DOST and CSC, senior and junior researchers, and administrative staff. The center's agriculture programs are focused in plant biosecurity, plant pest management, pesticide management, public service, and advisory services. The center provides technical services to the public through its plant health clinic by providing plant health diagnosis, pest and natural enemy identification, and pest management recommendations. The center is also proactive in addressing serious pest problems through quick response to pest outbreaks. The center hubs newly equipped laboratories with cutting-edge equipment to support researches in the fields of entomology, plant pathology, pesticide management, vertebrate pest, and weed science. The center generates knowledge through extensive research and deep extension programs that translate into public service. It provides international and local training to disseminate research findings and crop protection technologies. The center reaches out to the general public through publications, visitor services and promotional activities through showcases and digital media. NCPC addresses food security and food safety concerns through promotion and continuous development of technologies. Through the years, the center have identified several biological control agents against major pests. NCPC continues to excel in the fields of crop protection and pest management, innovating endlessly to attain world-class excellence on research and public service.
The National Crop Protection Center was established on May 19, 1976 by virtue of Presidential Decree No. 936, issued by former President Ferdinand E. Marcos. The center is an expansion of the Rodent Research Center, which was created in 1968. Through the efforts of Minister of Agriculture, Arturo Artanco Jr., former UPLB Chancellor Abelardo D. Samonte, College of Agriculture Dean Eduardo B. Perez Jr., and founding director Fernando F. Sanchez Sr., the center became a comprehensive unit on pest management. The U.S. Agency for International Development and Ministry of Agriculture provided funds for the building scholarships and for the creation of regional crop protection centers. The center's vision is world-class excellence in crop protection research, extension, and policy support programs to ensure food security, environmental sustainability, and the upliftment of the general public's quality of life. Its mission is to be a national center totally committed to pursue relevant research and extension programs necessary in the generation of appropriate technologies in sustainable agriculture and development and empowerment of its various stakeholders. Its directors, Dr. Fernando F. Sanchez Sr. He was the founder of the National Crop Protection Center and was the director from 1976 to 1989. He established a crop protection training and extension from the Rodent Research Center in 1968. He also introduced the diploma program in crop protection. Dr. Romulo G. Davide. He was the director of NCPC from 1989 to 1992. He authored the first NCPC Manual of Management and Operations. He developed pioneering research in pest management. Dr. Jose R. Medina. He was the director of NCPC from 1992 to 1995. He pioneered the mobile action groups through farmer scientists and training program. He also prioritized farmer empowerment in the most remote agricultural areas of the country. Dr. Luis Ray I. Velasco. He was the director of NCPC from 1995 to 1999. He enhanced the integrated pest management by modernizing NCPC's information technology. He also published the National Test Survey Manual as a guide for farmers and scientists nationwide. Dr. Eliseo P. Kadatan. He was the director of NCPC from 1999 to 2002. He activated NCPC's linkage with the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, by leading the VA4 network in 2002. He produced the first series of test notes and biological control. Dr. Susan May F. Kalupa. She was the director of NCPC in 2002 to 2005. She initiated the production of information materials such as techno guides and posters for corn and selected vegetables for the Filipino farmers' use. She strengthened partnership with various LGUs to increase knowledge and awareness on pest management. In 2005, NCPC was integrated with the Departments of Animology, Plant Pathology, and Weed Science as a crop protection cluster. From 2005 to 2016, the following directors of the crop protection cluster were Dr. Virginia R. Ocampo, Dr. Avelino D. Raimundo, Dr. Celia D. R. Medina, and Dr. Teresita U. De Lisay. In 2016, it was restructured as a research unit of College of Agriculture and Food Science, along with the five new established academic institutes and four restructured research institutes and centers. Dr. Hill L. Maxino became the first director of the NCPC after the declassering of the Crop Protection Cluster in 2016. He became the director until 2020. Following him was Mr. Melvin D. Abuenda, who is still the current director of NCPC. Mr. Abuenda leads more than 100 personnel working together to achieve its vision to achieve world-class excellence in crop protection research, extension, and policy support programs to ensure food security, environmental sustainability, and the upliftment of the general public's quality of life. 
the center continues to provide world-class excellence in pest management through its various programs focused on plant biosecurity, pest and pesticide management, and public service. Its strengthened researches, human resources, and multi-institutional collaboration make NCPC a dynamic center that meets the needs of various stakeholders including the active, LGUs, farmers, policymakers, and other government institutions. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning everyone. Narito po tayo ngayon sa ikaapat na episode ng ating anniversary webinar series. Ito po ay inihahandog ng National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science para sa 45th anniversary celebration na may temang reshaping pest management responding to challenging times through relevant and unwavering research and extension. Ako po si Randall Candano, isa pong uh, university researcher sa NCPC, ang inyong MC para sa webinar ngayong umaga. And uh, just to give you a recap of the previous webinars, ang unang episode po ay ang back-to-back uh, -to -back talk patungkol sa fall armyworm at onion armyworm na inihatid sa atin ng mag-asawang scientist na sina Scientist Mariona Basero 
at scientist Marcela Nabasero. And uh, for our second episode, nagkaroon tayo ng interesting topic tungkol sa Mango Fest tulad ng Mango Lip Hopper, Mango Trips, at Mango Sesid Fly sa pangunguna ni Miss Jenna Joy Apolinario. At noong third episode naman, ibinahagi ni Miss Michelle Guerrero mula pa sa New Zealand ang iba't ibang mikrobyo sa lupa na maaaring magamit sa pamamahala ng mga peste ng halaman. Ibinahagi rin sa atin ni Miss Guerrero ang mga molecular approaches sa pag-aaral ng mga mikrobyong ito. At uh, ngayong umaga naman po, ating pong uh, matutunghayan ang isa sa napapanohong pagtalakay sa mga sakit, transboundary diseases ng kasaba, kakao at corn. Ito po ay uh, back-to-back-to-back to back presentation na pangungunahan ng tatlo sa aming experts pagdating sa larangan ng plant pathology. Ang atin pong webinar ngayong umaga ay uh, pinamagatang Traps Diseases Beyond Boundaries. Know the Transboundary Diseases of Trisis, Kasaba, Cacao, and Corn. Ito po ay uh, bahagi ng kanilang ongoing project na pinopondohan ng Department of Agriculture Bureau of Agriculture Research o DABAR. Okay, paalala lamang po na ang webinar na ito ay matutunghayan ninyo sa tatlong platforms. Mapapanood nyo po kami sa pamamagitan ng Zoom. Live din po kami sa NCPC YouTube channel at sa NCPC Facebook page. At para po sa lahat ng sumusubaybay sa Zoom, YouTube o Facebook, sana po ay uh, malinaw ninyo akong napapanood at naririnig. Sa atin pong mga participants, maaari po kayong mag-message kung uh, saang lugar kayo nanonood gamit ang chat box at comment sections para naman po habang ongoing ang ating webinar ay uh, ma-acknowledge ko kayo. Okay po ba? At uh, para po formal na simulan ang ating webinar ngayong umaga, tunghayan po natin ang paunang mensahe ng butihing direktor ng National Crop Protection Center, Director Melvin D. Ebuenga. Sir Melvin? Malugod na pagbati sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga. Maraming salamat po muli kay Dean Agbisit at Associate Dean Bambikawili at kay Ms. Rachel at ang mga NCPC Webinar Committee para maisakatuparan ang webinar na ito. Sa ating mga participants, maraming salamat po at kami inyong muling pinaunlakan na dumalo sa ikaapat na episode ng NCPC 14th Anniversary Webinar Series na Crap Disease Beyond Boundaries no the transboundary diseases of trisis, kasaba, cacao at corn. Makakasama natin dito si na Dr. Marie Pinili, Freddy Signabon at Joy Mendoza na pao mga dalubhasang mananaliksik sa sakit ng halaman. Malalaman natin dito ang iba't ibang sakit ng kamoting kahoy, mais at kakao at kung paano subpuin ang mga ito. Ang mga sakit ng halaman ay walang kinikilalang hangganan sila ay naikakalat sa anumang lupalop ng mundo tulad ng COVID-19. Dahil sa bilis ng kalakalan at climate change, kahit na mga sakit na dati-rati sa mga malalamig na lugar lamang, ay nagiging problema na rin ng mga bansang tropikal tulad ng Pilipinas. Kaya kung, ta- kaya kung tayo'y muling makinig sa tatlong speakers, ay nasisiguro kung kayo yung lahat ay may mapupulot na bagong kaalaman sa umagang ito. Hindi man tayo magkita ng personal, umaasa akong hindi ito ang huli nating pagtatagpo at laging bukas ang NCPC para sa inyo upang kayo'y aming matulungan sa inyong mga suliranin sa peste at sakit ng halaman. Muli, maraming salamat. Lagi pong mag-ingat sa COVID-19. Manalangin sa Diyos at mabuhay tayong lahat. Maraming uh, salamat po sa aming uh, Director, Melvin D. Ebuenga. Okay, tingin ko po ay uh, ready na tayong lahat upang makinig at matuto mula sa ating mga speakers. At uh, para po malaman na natin kung ano ba yung uh, sinasabi na transboundary diseases at kung ano-ano ang mga ito, narito na po ang ating mga speakers. Ang uh, atin pong unang speaker... Ang atin pong unang speaker ay uh, nagtapos ng Bachelor of Science in Agriculture at Master of Science in Plant Pathology degree sa UP Los Baños. 
Siya po ay nagtapos din ng kanyang PhD degree sa Tokyo University of Agriculture sa Bansang Japan. Sa kasalukuyan, siya ay isang university researcher sa National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, UP Los Baños. Pinamungunahin niya ang pananaliksik tungkol sa integrated management strategies and dissemination of improved diagnostic systems for selected transboundary pests and diseases of crops na pinupondohan ng Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research o DABAR. Samahan niyo po akong i-welcome ang ating unang speaker, walang iba kundi si Dr. Marita S. Pinili. Doc Marie, maaari na po kayong magsimula, ma'am. Hey. Okay na po? Yes, ma'am. Nakikita ko na po ang inyong screen. Okay. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, for this morning, uh, as a final installment ng ating uh, webinar in celebration of the 45th uh, okay. 45th anniversary ng NCPC, we would like to give you updates on transboundary pests and diseases of corn, cassava, and cacao. So this presentation is in line with the R4D uh, for, pest, for transboundary pests and diseases of crops uh, program ng Department of Agriculture through Bureau of Agricultural Research. So transboundary pests and diseases to start with, so according to FAO, it is a global phenomenon in which important pests and diseases of crops migrate or exhibit wide geographic movement. It affects food crops, causes significant losses to farmers, and it threatens food security. So there are several factors that um, play important role in this phenomenon. So number one is globalization, trade and climate change, and even reduced resilience in crop production system. So this includes in continuous monoculture and uh, resistance to pesticides. So there are uh, three principal ways in which uh, plant pests and diseases spread. So number one, yung trade or other human migrated movement. So inain yung plantito plantita nowadays. So make sure na if you buy something or any planting materials, dapat it is free from pests and diseases. And also yung importation mga seeds. So we should secure seed certification or there should be declaration that those materials have resistance to particular diseases. Next one is uh, environmental forces, of course, weather, and uh, there are diseases na or pests na windborne. Lastly, the importance ng insect vector or other vector-borne pathogens. That's why yung monitoring ng potential insect vectors is very crucial. Okay, for this webinar, we have divided this into three subtopics. So the first one I will be discussing about, which is broom disease or CWB. This will be followed by the threat to cocoa production caused by vascular strict dieback. And lastly, um, all about the uh, potential transboundary uh, disease of corn, which is the white spot of corn. Okay, so this is the title of my presentation. Which is which? The ubiquitous world of the cassava which is broom disease. So parang Halloween ang dating, ano? But later on, malalaman nyo bakit siya which is broom. Ang tawag. So since uh, most of our viewers are students and some farmer groups and from the academe, so I outlined my presentation as follows. So I'll be giving a short background about cassava and the uh, cassava industry. Also importance of cassava. And so I will give you some of the considered transboundary pests and diseases of cassava. And of course, yung major topic natin, which is CWB, including its uh, uh, status and impact. And of course, yung causal organism niya, which is the phytoplasma. And lastly, uh, I will give you some of the current management options to control CWB and some of the recent uh, our current research on the detection of phytoplasma. So cassava, to start with, uh, cassava or manihot escolenta, it's also called manioc or yuca, 
But dun sa ating local dialect, we called it Kamuting Kahoy or Balinghoy. So it came from, it belongs to the family Euphorbia CE and it is a woody shrub. Ito ay native sa South America and cassava is also considered as the third largest source of food carbohydrates, so next to rice and corn. So among the crops uh, cultivated, cassava is uh, drought tolerant. And it can also grow in uh, acidic soil, as you can see here. So this one is from uh, Ilocos. So cassava is also known for its cyanogenic glucosides. That's why no balita nyo na merong uh, na food poison due to residual cyanide. That's why if you eat cassava, uh, may mga special preparation. You can boil it or let it dry, sun dry for a while before consuming it. And there are varieties na hindi talaga edible. Okay, so looking at the cassava industry. Actually, um, Africa, Latin America, and Asia are the top major producers of cassava. In Africa, uh, it is consumed as food, mainly as food. For uh, uh, Latin America and Asia, uh, we utilize cassava for its byproducts, so more on industrial uses. So for the world production of cassava, it is noted that in 2019, the total production has reached about 300 million metric tons from uh, the 27 million hectares total area planted. And 56% of uh, the world production came from Africa, 56.2, particularly in Nigeria. And then 30.5% came from Asia, in which Thailand is the top uh, exporter of uh, cassava. So Philippines, we have also major cassava growing areas, and it is situated in Mindanao area. So in 2019, so around 2.6 million metric tons have been produced out of the 222,000 hectares of total uh, area planted cassava. So barm shares almost 63% of the total production, followed by Northern Mindanao and Sambuanga Peninsula with 17.3% and 3.7% respectively. So majority ng ating cassava production ay nasa Mindanao. But there are also areas in Visayas where there's uh, expansion already of uh, cassava. So we have Bohol, Cebu, in Luzon, particularly in Bicol region, we have Masbate, sa Camarines Sur ay meron na din. And in central Luzon, in Pampanga and Isabela. So indeed, um, there's uh, expansion already of uh, cassava production. So one of the factors that uh, favor the expansion of uh, cassava production, it's yung demand niya for uh, cassava products. So from uh, cassava tuber as food, eaten as directly as food and as vegetables, yung, yung leaves, we can further process it into chips, flour, uh, various confectionaries and uh, also beer. And yung malaking production ng cassava is it is very important as source for biofuel and of course animal feed. And aside from this, uh, cassava is also known for its medicinal value. Um, it is rich in vitamin C and it is good for digestion, yung tubers or yung root root mismo. Uh, it's also identified with anti-cancer activity, particularly for colon cancer. And then yung dahon niya, it is rich in beta-carotene and lysine. Okay, let's go to pests and diseases. So this time, I'll be giving you some of the considered transboundary uh, pests and diseases of uh, cassava. So the African cassava mosaic disease, although hindi pa to na verified sa Pilipinas, but we have to watch out for this one. 
So, ito yung base, typical symptom niya. So, yellow and green patches sa uh, lip blade. And then, if susceptible varieties is infected with this disease, um, severe stunting, yellowing, and uh, a death of uh, the cassava variety. And of course, reduce uh, root growth or tubers. So very low yield. So it could cause 20 to 90 95% yield losses in susceptible cultivars. And this disease is uh, caused by the African cassava mosaic virus. Uh, which is transmitted by white fly or Benicia tabasai. So we have to be very careful uh, with this one. The next important uh, disease is the CBB or cassava bacterial blight disease. This is caused by Sancomonas. And uh, the typical symptom of CBB is blighted patch, doon sa dahon, and pag pinutol mo yung pitiol, you will see brownish gummy exudate. Ayan. Ayan yung mga diagnostic symptoms niya. Aside from the infected cuttings and entry through wounds, uh, they said that grasshopper can be a vector of CBB. Actually, CBB would cause 100% yield loss if favorable environment uh, or conditions for disease outbreak occur. In fact, in the late... Uh, some sometime in 1970s, so it became uh, an epidemic in Congo and uh, Nigeria, which caused famine during that time. So, ito ay may report na din ito sa Pilipinas. Okay, for other disease, ito yung na observed namin just recently in Isabela. So, we suspect this uh, infection as cassava mosaic, but this one needs to be verified. Okay. So when it comes to pests, ito yung mga normal na insect pest na observe namin sa field just recently. So we have mealybugs. There are varieties that are very susceptible to mealybugs. Scale insects, especially during this dry season, napakadaming scale insects. And this one, this one is quite alarming when we went to Pampanga. So we observed high incidence of uh, or infestation of red spider mites. So yung condition ngayon is very conducive for uh, red spider mites. Sometimes sa pagkakamalan nga siya, uh, which is broom kasi lumiliit na yung mga shoots. But this is due to uh, red spider mites. Okay. So for the main topic, which is the cassava, which is broom disease. This is actually... Uh, an old disease identified since 1939 in, in Brazil. It was first reported in Brazil. Uh, kaya siya tinawag na which is broom. As you can see, it resembles a broom-like structure like this one due to proliferation of uh, auxiliary and auxiliary shoots. Okay? It may cause sterility of flowers and abnormal elongation or shortening ng internodes. If your planting material is infected at a very young stage, it may cause stunting and yellowing. So the other symptom, which is phyllody or viricense, so this one is very common to other uh, crops or hoes infected by phytoplasma. So later on, I will show you some of the photos. Okay, another diagnostic uh, symptom for CWB is necrosis presence of this brown discoloration when you cut the stem. So if you're uncertain about the uh, manifestation sa leaves, you can cut actually the stem and look for this discoloration. Okay. So ano ba ng uh, kasaba which is broom disease? This is the phytoplasma. So phytoplasma is formerly known as mycoplasma-like organism. So it was discovered by a Japanese scientist in the late uh, 1960s. So it is classified as bacterium, but it has uh, no cell wall. That's why yung shape niya is pleomorphic, like this one. And it is very small. So it could range from 200 to 1,000 nanometers. So mas maliit pa siya kesa sa E. coli. It inhibits or inhabits phloem of the host plant. That's why 
most of the identified uh, vector ng phytoplasma are those phloem feeding insects like the mga lip hoppers. But sa case ng kasaba, which is broom disease, yung transmission niya is, uh, has to be uh, verified since mahirap nga mag-conduct ng transmission experiment. Okay, so uh, the phytoplasma now is uh, termed as or named as candidatus phytoplasma before it's mycoplasma-like organism. Candidatus because um, this, bacteri this bacterium is already characterized. However, it cannot be cultured routinely using an um, artificial medium. And phytoplasma to denote that it is an obligate parasite of plants. So based on the pag-aaral ng gene sequences ng phytoplasma, yung 16S rRNA gene niya uh, and other characteristics done biologically and pathologically, and of course, yung RFLP analysis. Uh, there are 46 candidatus phytoplasma species, 34 16S groups, and more than 100 subgroups. Napakadami reported worldwide, and it is associated to over 700 plant species. Sobrang dami. And it was also uh, identified that phytoplasma is sensitive to tetracycline group, but not to penicillin. So again, this uh, organism cannot be cultured in vitro, although there are reports na may mga artificial medium that can support the growth of uh, phytoplasma. Um, yung manner niya as an obligatory parasite, uh, parasitic lifestyle, that makes us uh, difficult to study yung identity and even transmission noong uh, CWB, or the phytoplasma itself. Okay, so hindi lang sa kasaba makikita ang phytoplasma. So you can also find it in Ampalaya. This is very common, yung little leaf symptoms sa Ampalaya, sa upo, uh, sa patola. So very common, so this is caused by phytoplasma. And even sa bamboo, would you imagine uh, bamboo can be infected by phytoplasma? So mukha na siyang uh, ornamental uh, Mag maganda siyang tignan, but uh, mind you, this is infected with phytoplasma. And also, yung orna other ornamental uh, plants like hydrangea, yung pilodinus na sabi ko kanina na symptom, uh, instead of producing uh, this type of flower, uh, nakaproduce siya ng green leaf-like structures. So, nagiging green. And there are a lot of uh, hosts for phytoplasma. Okay, so what is now the status of uh, CWB? So in Asia, truly, it is present already in Vietnam, Thailand, and Cambodia. So this is one of the photos taken from Vietnam, uh, kasaba growing, growing areas in Dialai province. So Philippines was first uh, identified in Bukidnon in 2015, South Cotabato, and Sambuanga Peninsula. But nowadays, uh, parang lahat yata ng kasaba growing areas ay meron ng phytoplasma. So in Bohol, when we went there uh, last 2018, napakataas ang incidence ng CWB. Even in Camotes Island, it's Cebu, isolated island doon. So mataas na din ang incidence ng CWB. And now, just recently in Isabela. So, parang kahit saan, meron na talagang CWB. So, ano ba yung impact ng CWB? Number one is yield reduction. About 50 to 70 percent when symptoms appear 46 months after planting or during the middle of the growing season. But if your planting materials is already infected with CWB, it could cost 100 percent yield reduction. So, ganun katindi ang uh, effect. Ng CWB. So susceptible varieties, this include 
prime 5, prime 72, and K50. But we have also identified uh, golden yellows already uh, with CWB infection. So it is becoming prevalent and continuing the spread in several parts of the country. Thus, it threatens cassava supply. So amidst high demand for food, feeds, and industrial uses. And ito yung kinakatakutan natin, it might decrease export volume to as much as 30%. Okay. So we have seen the clearer picture how ubiquitous is, uh, how ubiquitous CWB. So what can we do is the importance on disease monitoring. We have to be aware, we have to create awareness that CWB is already present all over the country. So like uh, based on our experience in the Anbantayan Cebu, we have visited one cassava growing area there. And uh, yung unang tingin namin, it is free from uh, CWB, but may mga spots na kami nakita. So the farmer uh, ay natuwa at na nakita namin agad na merong CWB infection and he is not aware of this disease. Um, kaya ang immediate action is just grow or remove the infected uh, material para maprebenta yung spread niya. And then we give some information doon sa farmer how to prevent the CWB infection by not using the same infected uh, planting materials. Okay, what else? So your immediate action ng Department of Agriculture is to use uh, streptomycin sulfate. So we have the FPA uh, approved bactericide, which is the tapio guard. So this is already practiced in, being practiced in Bohol, and uh, we have visited sites in Isabela. So just use the recommended rate of streptomycin sulfate. But unfortunately, when we visited the area this year, we observed expression of CWB even on streptomycin treated. So uh, marami pang pwedeng gawin. We have to revisit yung uh, use ng streptomycin, whether nasusunod ba siya ng farmers yung tamang application niya, or uh, nagsisimula na mag-create ng or mag-develop na ng resistance to streptomycin. So we have to be very careful and watchful for using tapio guard. So we have now uh, conducted an ongoing uh, experiment, small experiment on monitoring the symptom expression. So we collected in, uh, CWB infected cassava which is treated with streptomycin, and we cut it. And then we monitor some plant parts that show the symptom. And uh, initially, we observed that the upper portion, the on makita yung typical, which is broom uh, symptom. So this is very important, simple experiment, but very important for quick detection of CWB from cuttings. Okay? What else? So in terms of diagnostic protocol, so very common yung nested PCR assay. Sabi nga napakahirap i-detect because of very small size and very low titer. So we use nested PCR assay and then we also tried RFLP. So RF, RFLP, this is to determine the strains of uh, CWB in the Philippines. And also, there's another technique, which is uh, the use of lubricated isothermal amplification or LAMP. Uh, there's a commercial kit, LAMP kit, developed by Nippon Gene, but the problem in using that kit is it cannot uh, detect 100% or it shows false uh, negative reaction to, fil to Philippine uh, CWB isolates. So to troubleshoot that, uh, we did an initial molecular characterization and uh, phylogenetic analysis of CWB strains 
in the Philippines and compare it with other isolates from Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam. So initially, we found out that yung ating strain ng CWB is different from other isolates na nakuha sa Southeast Asia. So in this uh, study, we can further improve yung ating diagnostic uh, system like uh, yung development ng lamp exclusive for CWB Philippine isolates. Okay. So thank you. And I would like to commend uh, our staff under Project 2 uh, for supporting us kahit pandemic. And also special thanks to uh, DA Kagan Valley Research Center all the way from Region 2 for the unselfish support during our field visit, uh, Isabella. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po, Doc Marie. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, mula po sa ating unang speaker na si uh, Dr. Marita Pinili na tutunan po natin kung ano ang latest status ng Cassava Witches Broom Disease o CWB at sa iba't ibang major growing areas ng Cassava sa Pilipinas. At ano ang magiging impact nito sa mga local growers. Na-discuss din po ni uh, Doc Marie kung ano ang maaaring gawing mitigation strategy upang mapag mapigilan ang patuloy na pagkalat ng sakit na ito. Muli, marang, maraming maraming salamat sa ating unang speaker, Dr. Marita S. Pinili. At be, be, before po tayo magtungo sa ating uh, second spe speaker, gusto ko lamang pong uh, i-recognize yung ating uh, mga participants na nagdapa sa ibang bahay ng Pilipinas. Meron tayong participants from Lon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Meron tayong mga participants na tumututok mula sa Day Region 11 Corn Program, Dabao City. Meron din tayong mga participants from uh, General Santos City, uh, Luna Ba Isiha, DARF-01. Meron din tayong mga participants from uh, Caraga State University, Visaya State University Main Campus. Meron din tayo from Urdaneta, Pangasinan, Cagayan State University, Tarlac Agriculture University. Meron din tayo from uh, Bulacan. And again, sa Mindanao, from uh, Central Mindanao University in uh, Bukidnon, from MMMSU in uh, La Union. At meron din tayong mga participants from uh, BPI Manila, Meron din tayo from RCPC, Region 4A. Mamarin mukhang makakakilala mo itong mga tumututok <laughs> sa atin ngayong umaga. Meron din po tayo from Mindanao State University, Maguindanao. And uh, meron din from Iloilo, CMU, at Plant Quarantine Service sa Quezon, Frabins. Mukhang marami pong na-invite yung ating mga speakers ngayong umaga. Meron din po tayo from uh, Pagbilaw, Quezon. So may, may ilan pang pumapasok na chat eh. So uh, tingnan ko lang, no? Meron from uh, Pampanga State University, uh, BPI Main Office sa Manila. Meron from uh, Sambuanga del Norte. So napakarami po nating participants ngayong umaga. And I'm sure marami rin silang mga katanungan mamaya. Ano? Okay, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok sa ating webinar ngayong umaga. Ang uh, susunod po nating speaker ngayong umaga ay uh, nagtapos naman ng Bachelor of Science in Nature, major in uh, Plant Pathology at uh, Master of Science in Plant Pathology sa UP Los Baños. Isa siya sa mga university researcher ng National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, UP Los Baños. Siya po ay involved din sa proyektong Integrated Management Strategies and Dissemination of Improved Diagnostic Systems for Selected Transboundary Fests and Diseases of Crops. Para po i-discuss ang uh, transboundary diseases and pests ng cacao, atin pong, ang atin pong susunod na speaker ay walang iba kundi si Mr. Freddy Webb B. Signabon. Sir Freddy, uh, Hindi na kayo magsimula, Sir Freddy. Uh, thank you, uh, Kuya Randy. Uh, 
Okay, nakikita niyo po ba, Kuya Randy? Yes, Freddy. Uh, Malinaw naka- din yung audio mo. Okay. Uh, naka-full screen or naka-presenter? Naka-presenter siya, ah, okay, Sir Freddy. Wait. wait lang, Kuya. Tanggalin ko lang yung... Okay, uh, good morning po sa lahat ng ating uh, participants, uh, sa ating mga colleagues dito sa NCPC at uh, sa UPLB. And uh, thank you din sa webinar committee headed by Mr. Jasper Sarmiento for the invitation sa aming team ng uh, plant pathology dito sa NCPC. So uh, for this uh, morning, we will be discussing uh, one of the serious threats in cacao production with emphasis on uh, vascular streak dieback. So for the outline of my uh, presentation, uh, we will have uh, we have three objectives uh, and uh, a brief word to the Philippine cacao industry. And of course, uh, we will be discussing uh, some of the major pests and diseases of cacao and uh, emphasizing on vascular streak dieback. And of course, uh, we will try to look at the current uh, management strategies or options. And what are the research initiatives uh, done uh, locally by uh, research institutions and universities in cacao and uh, try to look at some uh, challenges and opportunities in the cacao industry. So for the objectives, we have three first is, uh, it is to increase yung awareness natin sa VSD and of course, it's uh, management. And uh, second is to update uh, on the current research initiatives uh, by the different research institutions and state use in the country and try to look at some research gaps and opportunities in cacao. So uh, I hope uh, everyone is uh, familiar dito sa ating second crop, which is Theobroma cacao. So literally, uh, Theobroma means foods of the gods in Greek. So this, uh, this, this is the fruit of our cacao, uh, as you can see in the picture. So in the Philippines, we have uh, three commonly planted uh, varieties. We have the Criollo, Forestero, and Trinitario. And as far as I know, uh, these uh, three varieties are the ones uh, being used for the production of uh, chocolate. And uh, currently, we have uh, 16 uh, NSIC registered clones. And the most uh, common uh, clones uh, being planted, as uh, we have observed in our visit to the uh, cacao plantations across the country, is we have the UF18, PBC123, we have the BR25, K1, K2, and K9. So our host or our crop has both the male and uh, female uh, reproductive organ, uh, but unfortunately, it cannot self-pollinate. Uh, Hence, uh, sa isang farm, it is uh, recommended to at least have three to five clones. And this is to facilitate yung pollination. So unlike other uh, flowering plants, which is uh, pollinated by bees, uh, butterflies, and the likes, uh, our uh, crop for today, or cacao, is solely pollinated by Forsipomia midges. Uh, this is under deep terra. So this uh, picture here uh, shows yung, yung adult na uh, pollinator natin sa cacao. So uh, this uh, figure uh, shows us the uh, volume of production in the Philippines from the 1990s up to 2019. So as we can see, there is this uh, town, uh, decreasing uh, trend in the volume of uh, total national produce from 1990 to 2013. And this has steadily increased uh, up to this uh, present area. So uh, some of the uh, farming uh, challenges that uh, led to this uh, uh, decreasing trend is, of course, uh, the presence or the uncontrolled pest and diseases sa cacao natin. We have also the uh, lack of uh, or poor infrastructure. This is especially yung mga farm and to market roads natin. We have also 
this uh, uh, lack of uh, ating mga post-harvest facilities. And this is usually uh, observed dito sa mga scale, uh, small scale growers natin or backyard farmers natin ng cacao. So hopefully uh, this increase uh, will continue for the next, uh, next five years to revive yung ating uh, cacao industry. So in terms of uh, hectare, a similar trend uh, was observed uh, from the 1990s to 2013. And with the uh, effort of the national government to revive the uh, cacao industry uh, by uh, giving uh, free planting materials through the Department of Agriculture and uh, fertilizers, and at the same time, uh, partnering with uh, private uh, companies uh, tumataas na po or nai-encourage na po yung ating mga farmers to uh, dwell in cacao uh, farming. So uh, as we can see from 13, 2013 onwards, nag increase na rin po ang ating uh, area of production. So not just uh, on the in Mindanao, but uh, we have uh, this uh, expansion in Bicol. We also have uh, expansion in uh, Batangas. And uh, we have in Luzon also, we have this uh, in uh, Isabela and then Cagayan, so among other regions. So in terms of share, uh, the Davao share in terms of production, uh, total national production, the Davao region shares 80% of the total national produced and the rest is uh, divided in the different uh, regions. And uh, and uh, with the uh, with the uh, different uh, production uh, constraints in uh, farming or in cacao uh, farming, uh, we have a low production uh, output, and uh, this has led the country to import uh, around uh, 125 million worth in 2018 and 2019. So, with the inability of our local farmers to supply the local demand of uh, Philipp cacao uh, by products, this has led to importation. So uh, as napansin natin, kahit na tumataas yung ating production uh, from, uh, 2000, from 2013 onwards, tumaas rin yung ating uh, importation. So makikita natin na nagbuboom yung uh, chocolate industry or cacao uh, industry utilization ng mga uh, byproducts nito. So this uh, figure shows us yung uh, Philippine imports from 2008 to 2019. So uh, this is actually an opportunity sa ating mga local farmers to bridge yung gap or yung uh, supply and demand na uh, needed or yung demand which is uh, mataas kahit uh, locally or dito sa Pilipinas. And uh, kahit na nag import tayo, we are still uh, able to export also. So this is the Philippine export from uh, 2018 to 2019. So we are exporting uh, uh, chocolate and other uh, cacao byproducts also. So maganda yung ating uh, uh, cacao products or chocolate. So we have actually uh, chocolates from the Philippines, especially itong uh, Malagos uh, chocolate. Kung sino ang alam pong madami na ang nakatikin nito, which has won uh, several uh, international awards in the past uh, decades. So uh, this uh, figure just uh, shows us kung ano yung mga processes involved doon sa uh, production ng ating chocolate mula doon sa uh, cacao fresh beans. Uh, it has uh, two prime stages. We have the primary stages and uh, secondary uh, stage or processing. First stage or the primary is the fermentation and drying. And then uh, the secondary processing is the roasting, alkalization, and conching. So these uh, production constraints uh, has uh, hampered actually yung ating uh, potential ng ating uh, cacao industry in the country. Although uh, yung uh, Philippines is situated doon sa cacao belt, which is uh, conducive or favorable for the production of cacao, uh, mababa pa rin yung ating production uh, due to different production constraints, uh, particularly yung uh, uncontrolled or occurrence ng ating pest and diseases. So uh, I will just have to mention itong mga uh, major uh, pests 
uh, which we have observed during our uh, sampling or visit sa mga cacao plantations across the country. So in this uh, picture, we have uh, we have the uh, damage caused by a uh, cacao pod borer, this one. And uh, this uh, is the pupa of the uh, pod borer. And this is an adult. And this uh, is caused by conopomorpha cramirella. And then uh, the second uh, insect pest, which uh, we observe to be uh, present in almost all plantations is the myriad bag. So it has under this are different uh, genuses, genus. So this uh, picture shows us the uh, a myriad bug infesting a cacao fruit. And this picture uh, shows yung uh, infestation ng uh, myriad bug doon sa cacao fruit. And this one is uh, a comparison between yung healthy na cacao fruit versus a cacao fruit which was infested by uh, myriad bugs. So in uh, NCPC, we have actually a team or group which is working on this uh, cacao insect pest uh, under the leadership ni Miss uh, Marie Joy Beltran. So uh, when you have when you have any questions or uh, collaborations, you want to collaborate with them, you can contact. Miss uh, Beltran regarding this uh, insect pest. And uh, for the diseases, we have uh, uh, observed the two common uh, diseases. We have the Phytophthora padrat caused by uh, Phytophthora palmivora and uh, capsici. So how do we identify this uh, disease? So first is uh, occurrence of brown spot. So it uh, the brown spot can either uh, occur or appear at one end of the fruit. And then after five days, I, sorry, after infection, uh, yan, mapapansin na natin na mag-occurrence mag, uh, ng brown spots. And then after three days, uh, the whole, whole fruit ng ating cacao is uh, infected with the uh, pathogen or with the fungi. And then uh, after some time, mapapansin natin na may mga mycelia ng tumutubo doon sa infected or brown spot or yung uh, whole fruit mismo. And when you try to break yung uh, ating fruit, mapapansin natin na there is this internal rotting ng ating mga cacao pods or yung ating beans. So usually uh, this uh, pathogen uh, affects yung ating fruit. Uh, with the uh, enzymes and mycotoxic activity in the cacao pads. And of course, we have this uh, uh, vascular strict dieback, which is of concern dito sa ating presentation. So uh, the VST is uh, actually first reported in Papua New Guinea in the 1960s. And uh, this uh this uh this is is of a uh, great concern since uh it can affect yung uh, seedling stage and of course yung branches ng ating mga cacao mature plants and uh it can also lead to plant death so the most uh, typical uh, symptoms we have observed is this uh, green island green uh Red Island with a chlorosis. So based doon sa aming mga uh, uh, studies uh, or what do you call that? Yung aming survey, uh, the, the symptoms in the leaf of virus. So it depends doon sa altitude. Minsan dito sa lowland, napapansin namin na ganito yung symptoms. And uh, dito naman sa medyo matataas na altitude, medyo hindi masyado prominent yung symptoms. So when you uh, look or Tanggalin mo itong symptomatic leaf, uh, you can see na uh, nagkakaroon ng browning dito sa xylem vessels in the vascular tissues. So this, this is the browning. This is the typical uh, browning doon sa xylem vessels. And this is also mapapansin ninyo doon sa mismong uh, etiol. And then uh, when you uh, try to uh, open yung uh, infected uh, branch or stem, napapansin natin na there is this browning doon sa uh, vascular system ng ating infected na branch. So this is caused by Cerato basidium theobromae. So during moist condition, itong ating uh, pathogen, fungal pathogen, 
uh, able to grow uh, mycelium dito sa mga leaf scars uh, dito. And then uh, this uh, produces yung mga basidio carps and uh, formation ng mga basidia and of course yung mga basidio spores which is uh, responsible for uh, new infections sa ating cacao uh, nearby cacao plants. So this uh, picture shows us yung uh, infected cacao with a uh, VSD and uh, halos uh, mamamatay na po siya. So uh, the isolation of the CT or Cerato Basidium Tiobrume is a little bit tricky and difficult uh, due to the nature ng ating fungal pathogen. So ito ay nearly obligate and then uh, mabagal siyang tumubo sa mga nutrient media. So during isolation, na na-overrun siya ng ating mga uh, ibang uh, fungi associated with uh, VSD. So this uh, picture shows us yung growth ng ating uh, city using in uh, water agar. And also this one is uh, growth ng ating uh, city sa infected branch. And under the microscope, ito yung uh, mapapansin natin yung this one is this is the Dalipor septa. And of course, yung right branching ng mycelium, which is uh, typical for this uh, Cerato theobromae. And uh, of course, uh, when yung mga basidio spores ay nagform doon sa ating uh, leaf scars, uh, this is uh, dispersed by wind. So very narrow naman yung uh, sporulation ng ating pathogen. So usually, uh, sa gabi or umaga ito na didisperse or nag-sporulate. So medyo uh, mapapansin natin, uh, medyo bihira ang makita natin sa isang farm uh, from uh, around 80 meters. 80 meters mula doon sa infected uh, tree since yung kanyang uh, sporulation is uh, very narrow. And of course, uh, relatively low yung sporulation rate ng ating uh, fungi since uh, yung mga basidio carps natin ay napoform lang sa uh, uh, leaf scars during moist condition. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, pathogen or fungal pathogen is most uh, damaging sa ating mga seedlings, especially yung mga less than 10 months old, since uh, infection ng ating uh, single stem can result to uh, plant death. And as I say, incubation is three to five months before symptoms appear. So usually when you have your basidius form nag-land uh, doon sa ating uh, shoot apex, it, penet it can uh, penetrate yung mga uh, yung, uh, growing uh, shoot apex and then infect yung ating leaves and stems. So as we can see, since na three to five months yung kanyang uh, incubation, nag-grow uh, nag pa yung ating halaman, nag pa ng leaves. So after three to five months, papapansin natin na yung mga symptomatic leaf ay nasa third or fifth flash below the shoot apex. So what are the uh, current uh, management strategies that can be implemented? Of course, uh, Quarantine. So since yung ating uh, pathogen, the natural spread of the pathogen is uh, limited by its uh, biology, uh, measures uh, should be implemented to restrict yung transport ng ating fungus by humans, especially for long distance uh, transport or transmission. And second is uh, disease resistance. However, yung mga resistance studies is hampered uh, by uh, difficulty in obtaining uh, inoculum for bio bioassays since yung ating uh, pathogen cannot be uh, cannot sporulate in vitro and very narrow yung kanyang uh, wind or very narrow yung window niya for sporulation under field condition and of course we have the cultural practices we have uh, clean nursery stock dapat free ito ng uh, any pathogen or uh, BSD specifically and then uh, pruning of this is material below uh, 30 cm of the discolored xylem. So this is to prevent yung further infection ng ating plant. And at the same time, ma-reduce natin yung uh, site of uh, sporulation ng ating pathogen. And then uh, shade and canopy management. So this is to provide aeration doon sa ating uh, farm o kaya doon sa microclimate ng ating cacao plant. So as, uh, as we know, yung... Uh, Ating pathogen requires a moist condition. 
for for it to infect or for it to sporulate. And then of course uh, the use of biocon agent. So unfortunately at present wala pa tayong available na biocontrol agent. Uh, but uh, a few research laboratories is uh, currently working on the use of this uh, biocon agent to manage BSD. So we can actually use uh, the epiphytic microbes, which can be used to reduce leaf infection. And of course, uh, there's the potential of this endophytic fungi and bacteria, which can be used or which can be used to prevent uh, vascular colonization ng ating BSD. And of course, the basidiocarp stage ng ating uh, uh, fungi can be targeted also using this uh, biocontrol agents. So for the chemical control, uh, uh, several uh, fungicides, fungicides has been uh, observed to, effect, to be effective under experimental conditions. Specifically, ito yung uh, uh, ergosterol biosynthesis pathway uh, that uh, is being inhibited by this uh, fungicide. So uh, hopefully for the next uh, three or to five years, we can have sufficient data under uh, field condition ng performance ng ating mga uh, uh, fungicides na ito. So Pilipinas, I think we have, uh, we have the uh, several uh, fungicides registered under the FDA or FPA for uh, VSD. And uh, we can actually look that one doon sa site ng ating uh, FPA. So in general, uh, what uh, can we do with uh, to manage VSD? Of course, uh, the use of moderately resistant cultivars. Unfortunately, ito, uh, wala pa atang uh, available na data regarding sa performance ng ating mga clones uh, available locally, commercially available. So probably we have to work on this too para magkaroon tayo ng idea which cultivars or uh, clones is or have this uh, resistance to VSD. And of course, this is in combination with the good uh, cultural practices. So selection ng planting location. So dapat medyo malayo ito sa mga old uh, infected cacao plants. So Second is yung covering of plants natin doon sa nurseries. So this is important to exclude yung uh, inoculum. Uh, may it be VSD or other diseases. And then uh, pruning of cacao, this is to facilitate yung uh, light penetration and aeration. And of course, reduction ng relative humidity doon sa ating microclimate. And then uh, regular removal of uh, infected branches. And this is to prevent or uh, remove yung mga sites, uh, yung mga possible sporulation sites. And of course, identification ng indigenous host. So as of now, uh, ang uh, isang host ng city is yung avocado. So uh, hopefully, uh, ma-identify pa kung ano pa yung ibang uh, host ng ating uh, BSD to, to improve yung ating integrated uh, management. So some of the recommended practices uh, in controlling not just uh, VSD but the cacao fruit diseases in general is yung rehabilitation, pruning of cacao trees. This is especially done when yung ating plantation is matataas sila masyado at saka very old na yung ating puno. So at least uh, with the heavy pruning, uh, matatanggal natin yung mga uh, low branches at saka yung mga tangled branches and uh, ma-maintain natin na at least around 3 meters yung taas ng ating puno to facilitate yung uh, uh, harvesting. And then uh, shade regulation of, of at least uh, 30 to 50 percent. And then of course yung maintenance pruning to facilitate yung uh, uh, aeration and of course yung reduction ng RH. And ma-maintain din natin yung low RH sa ating microclimate. So sucker removal, this is to remove yung mga potential sites of infection sa ating uh, cacao plant. And then uh, we have yung drainage management. So this is usually done during uh, summer months to prevent yung water lagging ng ating mga plantations or farms. And then uh, weeding, this is uh, usually done uh, four times a year, at least four times a year. And uh, usually this is done to remove yung mga matataas nating mga damo at uh, large leaf 
And of course, maridus din natin or madiscourage natin yung infestation ng rats and of course snakes for the safety ng ating mga farmers. And then timely harvesting uh, to prevent yung overripe ng ating mga cacao fruits which can lead to infestation and of course nag attract ito ng mga other animals. And then uh, complete removal of fruits. So usually this is done after the main harvest. So lahat ng mga fruits niya tinatanggal. Uh, may it be diseased or yung mga healthy para uh, ma, ma break natin or ma reduce natin yung uh, level of inoculum for the succeeding uh, season. So removal of diseased fruits, uh, sanitary or sanitary pruning to reduce yung level of inoculum, and then of course rational application of fungicides. So usually this is done in the first two months of uh, flower of uh, cacao fruiting or flower formation and fruiting and uh, using uh, copper, copper oxide uh, fungicides. And uh, what are the research initiatives on cacao uh, for the past uh, five years? So we have uh, several research institutions and uh, state use working on cacao. We have in uh, UPLB, the group of Professor uh, Balijan with the US Stride uh, funded project, the comparative detection of uh, fungi associated with uh, VSD across the country. We also have a DOSTP card, Sarai2. And uh, this is in uh, collaboration with the dip different uh, departments and colleges in the university. We also have the DOST funded uh, project, Cacao Pest Management Program, uh, biologically based approaches. And I think this is in collaboration uh, with uh, UPLB, uh, De La Salle, and other research uh, facilities. And of course, uh, we have the Transboundary Pest and Diseases of Crops funded by uh, DA Bar. Also, we have this uh, research as currently being implemented by the University of Southeastern Philippines, uh, funded by DOS Card, the uh, development of uh, Mechanical uh, machineries, uh, the mucilager, fermenter dryer for cacao. Of course, uh, we also have the supply chain management funded by Picard and also a project funded by Pichard, which is the blockchain based novel system application for transparent traceability of cacao products. We also have uh, initiatives or research conducted at the South University of Southern Mindanao. We have a DOST funded uh, project, the community based tablea production, and also uh, funded by Picard, the use of uh, marker assisted breeding for the identification of uh, high yielding cacao varieties, uh, creolotypes, and uh, disease resistant varieties. And uh, also a program uh involving uh, BSU, VSU, CBZUA, and DARFU 11, which involves the uh, multi-location trial of uh, promising varieties of cacao in the different uh, climatic zones in the Philippines. And this is funded by Bicard. We also have uh, these uh, projects at the Central Mindanao University with the SNT community-based farms for uh, cacao production in Bukidnon funded by Picard and uh, funded by Pichard, the technological solutions for the advancement of the Broma cacao industry in the country. So currently, ano ba yung mga challenges sa cacao uh, farming or production? We have uh, observed this uh, low productivity of cacao plantations. So this is usually uh, sa mga plantations natin na very old na. So we have visited farms in Davao del Sur where yung mga plants nila or cacao plants nila ay century old na. So as uh, we have observed, madami na talaga siyang sakit. And then uh, uh, yung kanyang uh, yield is uh, medyo mababa na po. And then uh, of course, we have the serious pest and diseases. Uh, as of the moment, medyo mahirap din i-manage ang mga ito uh, affecting yung yield ng ating mga cacao plants. And then uh, lack of skills and knowledge, especially sa mga small scale farmers. So uh, with our visit, napapansin namin na very poor yung sanitation ng mga ating mga cacao trees uh, and the cacao farm in general. So this is uh, very uh, prone to many uh, diseases of cacao. 
And of course, a problem also with the deteriorating nutrient in the soil. And uh, this has to be worked on also with uh, the uh, amendment of some uh, soil enhancers. We have also uh, limited post-harvest facilities, especially sa mga smallholder farmers. Uh, ito yung nagiging problem, kaya medyo mahirap ding mag-dwell uh, yung ibang ating farmers, uh, especially dito sa bandang Luzon uh, with the limited post-harvest facilities. And of course, yung mga limited nating farm-to-market roads. So mahirap pa rin uh, dalhin yung produkto natin uh, nakakaw sa mga uh, Uh, farmers or consumers. So this is not just a problem sa cacao but sa buong uh, agricultural sector in general. So ano ba yung mga research opportunities uh, that can be done for uh, the cacao industry? Of course, uh, cacao breeding for VSD resistance with the aid of uh, molecular markers. So this is to speed up yung uh, identification ng resistance para hindi na natin uh, antayin yung uh, development of symptoms sa ating mga plants. And then second is uh, identification ng mga genetic markers for both uh, VSD and Phytophthora resistance. So several uh, studies has been uh, published na may mga uh, uh, genes conferring resistance both for VSD and Phytophthora. And uh, I think uh, we have to work on this. And maganda itong incorporate dito sa ating uh, cacao breeding program. And then, of course, the use of uh, potential biocon agents for the management of this uh, pests and diseases ng ating cacao. I think uh, that's it for uh, my presentation and uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Sir Freddy, sa pagbabahagi ng mga informasyon tungkol sa iba't ibang transboundary diseases at pests ng cacao at kung paano natin ito mapapamahalaan. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Freddy. And uh, before we continue to our third speaker, again, I would like to acknowledge our participants. For, so for this morning, we have a uh, total of about 150 participants watching through Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. And I would like to acknowledge our participants from uh, CCAP, Keston Cacao Grower Cooperative, In Pabilo, Quezon, we also have participants from uh, University of Southern Mindanao Agricultural Research and Development Center. And uh, we, we also have participants from our partner industry. And of course, I would like to acknowledge our colleague from the Institute of Weed Science, Entomology and Plant Pathology and from the National Crop Protection Center. Okay, thank you po for uh, watching. Maraming salamat po sa patuloy na pagsubaybay sa ating webinar. Okay, meron din po tayong participants from M MSU General Santos City. And okay, ngayon po ay uh, tutungo naman tayo sa ikatlong uh, bahagi ng ating webinar. Ang uh, susunod nating speaker ay isa ring uh, university researcher mula sa National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, UP Los Baños. Siya po ay nagtapos ng kanyang uh, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture at Master of Science in Plant Pathology degree sa UP Los Baños. At kasalukuyan rin siyang kumukuha ng kanyang uh, PhD degree in Plant Pathology sa UP Los Baños. At involved din siya sa proyektong Integrated Management Strategies and Dissemination of Improved Diagnostic Systems for Selected Transboundary Pests and Diseases of Crops na pinopondohan ng DA bar Ang atin pong ikatlong speaker ay uh, walang iba kundi si Miss Mary Joy C. Mendoza. Ma'am Joy? Thank you, Korea Randy, Mr. Randolph Cadano. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, good morning everyone. I'll be your third speaker for today's webinar and I'll be talking about a disease in the last C, which is corn. So, tapos na tayo sa cassava na na-discuss ni Dr. Pinili, yung cassava, which is broom, and uh, sa cacao, yung VSD, vascular straight dieback, presented by Mr. Signabon. 
And now I'll be exposing the major culprit for the white spot disease of corn, which is actually a bacteria, the Panthea ananatis. Um, this is actually a relatively uh, new disease for corn. Unlike with just broom and VST, major extensive na yung mga research na nakadok. And uh, for white spot, limited lang yung studies available. So, um, so to begin with, this is the outline for my presentation. First, I, I will have to uh, do the introduction, a short intro about the corn production, then introduce some transboundary diseases of corn, then highlighting the white spot disease, its incidence, the symptoms, the leaves, the plant, the corn plant, what it looks like, sa, sa, looks like in a culture media under the microscope, so yun yung uh, morphological trait, and how it is being detected, paano kumakalat itong sakit na ito, and some of the management strategies available. And lastly, yung challenges for us in response to our presentation for this morning. Okay? So, we all know that corn is the second most important crop in the Philippines next to rice. So this graph shows you the corn production from 2016 to 2018. The production, the harvest area, and the yield. And in 2018, the total corn production ay umabot ng 1.81 million metric tons, which actually marked an improvement in the yield per hectare by 3.5%. And the major contrib contributor for this in Increase ay ang um, Cagayan Valley. Meron po bang umaten dito from Cagayan Valley? So, which actually co contributed a significant increment in production at 163,000 metric tons. It was followed by CAR, ARM, and then Caraga with a combined increment in production of 42,000 metric tons. And we are glad for this increasing trend sa corn production. But of course, Corn production is still hampered by biotic factors, including pests and diseases. And due to climate change, we'll never know. Several plant diseases are now becoming problems in crop production, emerging diseases, um, transboundary plant diseases we are discussing right now. And one of the transboundary disease ng corn na common sa atin ay yung downy mildew. Actually, part ito ng aming uh, project kasama itong white spot ng corn led by Dr. Pinili na um, funded ng DA bar. And as for the downy mildew, it has been a major problem sa corn production, especially those planting um, susceptible varieties. So before we continue, we know that transboundary diseases are border jumping threats to farmers' livelihood of course, and in general to food security. So we have experienced and continue to experience um, several uh, important diseases ng crops, like fusarium wilt of banana, sa pest naman ay fall army worm sa corn, and then sa livestock ASF. And this has been major problem sa agriculture until now. So um, what are the transboundary diseases of corn? We, we mentioned yung uh, downy mildew. And actually, any fungal or bacteri bacterial diseases might be a transboundary disease because of the fact that corn is widely produced all over the country. So why white spot of corn? Ano ba ang white spot of corn? Just to give you a brief background, um, there was a short communication published by Dr. Pinili's team, including Ms. Tumulva and Dr. Pascual last 2018-2019 regarding this disease. They observed uh, symptoms on leaves at planted corn in Malay Balay Bukedon, which are actually the character characteristic symptoms of white spot disease. And through several experiments, they found out that this disease is caused by several pathogens. And actually, this is part of our transboundary project, as I mentioned earlier. Of course, we need to further study the pathogen, the disease, and um, especially when it comes to management. And as of the moment, 
limited studies have been published regarding this disease and this bacteria as well. So, alamin muna natin ano ba yung white spot disease ng corn. Ngayon lang ba natin ito nakita? So, meron, but before that, I also found an article in Monkey Agriculture with a title, White Spot, a new emerging disease in corn. The article says that the disease was observed in Bukidnon in 2014 after a week of continuous light rain and foggy weather conditions. Then severe infections was uh, observed were observed in corn fields with mid elevations of about 350 to 955 meters above sea level. And from my other sources, uh, the disease is commonly observed in a higher elevation, given that a uh, favorable environment is present for the disease to progress and for the disease to spread. So why do we select 2% to you white spot of corn, a potential transboundary disease of corn? Given the basic information that the disease is prevalent in elevated areas, this disease might be a problem in other corn producing regions with the same topographic and climatic conditions, um, same with Bukidnon. And uh, since we have quite limited information on the pathogen and on the disease, we don't know yet the susceptible corn varieties. And also, the available res registered fungicide, no, sorry, bactericide for this disease. Is there any as of the moment? And so the purpose of this topic is for us to be informed. The informing, we may contribute to avoid the spread of, the, of, of this disease, perhaps. So, gaano na baka kalat, ka widespread itong disease na ito worldwide at saka dito sa Pilipinas. So, sa Brazil, it has been a major problem in the corn production. The, the disease was reported, was first reported in, in 1982. And uh, the disease was also reported in South and Central America, South Africa, and dito sa Asia, bukod sa Pilipinas, ang India ay uh, mayroong ganito na ding uh, disease sa corn. So, dito sa Philippines, ay, ang report lang ay sa Malay Bukidnon, Malay Balay Bukidnon, sorry, and in Northern Mindanao, as reported by Dr. Pinilis team. Okay, actually, expert po talaga dito ay si Dr. Pinilis, ano, parang spokesperson lang ako. Anyways, let's proceed. So, ano ba ang white spot disease of corn? or previously known as uh, PLS or Phaeosporia leaf spot caused by Phaeosporia mydis. So yun yung dating um, uh, alam natin na causal agent ng disease na ito. However, in 2001, researchers from Brazil reported that, this, that the disease was actually caused by Panthea ananatis through Cox postulate through their experiment. So when they isolate the bacteria from the infected corn leaves and inoculated to a healthy corn plant, same symptoms were produced. And so they concluded that the causal agent is actually a bacteria, P. ananatis. Some studies showed that um, yung presence then ng fungal pathogens when they uh, isolate yung uh, 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 doon sa infected uh, leaf. That's why the disease is called mixed infection or a complex disease. So these photos are the fungal pathogens isolated by the team of Dr. Pinili. Yung presence ng pomopsis, meron din silang na-isolate na Leos poralis, and then penicillium uh, funiculosum at saka pithomyces. Okay, so ano ang effect nito sa corn plant? Um, take note that this is a leaf spot. So, a major physiological process na affected ay photosynthesis. So, a reduction in photosynthetic leaf area that leads to premature leaf drying na magkakos ng pag-reduce ng plant cycle, mag-decrease yung grain size, at uh, ma-apektuhan ma din ang grain weight. And uh, worst case scenario or 
extreme na pwede mangyari ay ang pagkamatay ng uh, corn plant. Ano ba ang symptom? Ano ba ang mga symptoms ng uh, white spot sa dahon sa halaman? Okay, so in this photo, in this photos makikita natin yung uh, iba't ibang stages noong um, white spot. So first is itong water soap lesion dito and then um, it will turn to grayish lesion na magiging necrotic and uh, for some sa complex disease kung may presence ng fungal um, infection mayroong ma-observe na maliliit na itim na parang dot those are fungal uh, structures um, called pygnidia so yun and nag-skip po tayo and kung makikita natin dito at the right side right side photo ay ang severely infected na corn plant with white spot. Okay, so paano ba natin ma-differentiate itong white spot sa iba pang mga leaf spots ng corn? Alam natin na maraming uh, leaf spot diseases ang corn. So, um, for the bacterial leaf streak, white spots do have, um, in comparison to white spots, we can see yung um, distinct na lines dito sa uh, corn leaf. As we can see here sa ating uh, photo. So it's easy to differentiate ang leaf streaks sa white spots kasi irregular round shape sa uh, white spot ng corn. Okay, how about gray leaf spot? So um, same with leaf streak kanina, magkaiba, magkaiba sila ng shape ng spot. Medyo similar si gray leaf spot and saka si leaf streak. Pero we can differentiate sa margin ng spot, irregular, kasi yung sa gray leaf spot, well, bacterial streak ay straight yung margin. Pero in comparison to white spot, yung gray leaf spot, uh, we can easily differentiate yung, yung symptom. Okay. So how about um, in comparison to, to leaf blight, northern or south, southern leaf blight? Okay, so as we can see here in these photos, both southern and northern leaf blights have slender or oblong spots and actually are bigger than white spots. So we know now how it looks like in the plant and in the field and to differentiate them from other leaf spots um, of corn. So let us go back to, to um, let us go to yung itsura naman nito sa laboratory, sa culture media. So it's uh, the cultural traits of P. ananatis. This photo shows you yung appearance ng bacteria in growing media. This is um, nutrient agar. Again, this is from the uh, study of Ms. Tumulva and Dr. Pinili's team. So we can see here small yellow colonies. So this is top view. Pero kapag side view, medyo raised yung colony niya. So this bacteria is also a neg gram-negative bacteria. And uh, one way of classifying bacteria is through gram staining. So we'll know kung, kung ang bacteria ay pas gram-positive or gram-negative depende sa layer ng pep peptidoglycan. If kapag thick yung, yung uh, peptidoglycan layer, so ito ay positive at ang color ay violet sa gram staining. Pero kapag negative, um, color red siya. At saka meron siyang, ibig sabihin meron siyang thin uh, layer ng peptidoglycan. So, the bacteria is also motile. This means that it has appendages or means na makamove or makaswim. And uh, this bacteria belongs to the family Erwin-Yaki. So, tapos na natin yung kung ano yung itsura noong noong uh, bacteria sa, sa culture media, its cultural trait. So, tingnan natin under the microscope, ano bang itsura na uh, P. ananatis. These photos are taken using transmission electron microscope and we can see here bacterial particles inside the cell. A corn leaf na ang symptom ay yung water-soaked symptom. So, 
Ito. Yung may mga arrow. So, these are bacterial cells inside the corn um, tissue. Just to give you an added info uh, about this pathogen, medyo complicated itong CP ananatis, or should we say the bacteria is unconventional because according to some articles sa molecular plant pathology, this bacteria is capable of infecting humans aside from infecting a wide variety of crops. And then it can contaminate aviation jet fuel tanks. But also, meron din siyang positive side. Uh, it can contribute growth promotion sa potato at saka sa pepper. So, okay. Let us go back sa um, P. ananatis as pathogen ng corn. Paano natin determine if the coastal organism of the white spot or yung, this, yung spot na nakita natin sa corn ay P. ananatis. So, as we have discussed earlier, yung through microscopy. And, uh, um, of course, medyo high-end yung electron transmission, electron microscopy. You can do gram staining. But, of course, limited ng information na pwede natin mag kasi it's either gram positive or gram negative lang. You can also do the biochemical test. And also the Cox postulate. So, the bacteria must be present in every in every case of the disease. The bacteria must be isolated from the host with the disease and grown in pure culture. And then the specific disease must be reproduced when a pure culture of the bacteria is inoculated into a healthy, susceptible host. And lastly, we can determine the identity of this bacteria through PCR. Okay. So, paano ba nag-spread itong disease na ito? I have read uh, an article about uh, doon sa distribution sa plant, corn plants ng um, P. ananatis. And they found out that yung presence nito ay um, localized doon sa leaves lang. Pero may um, counting detection lang sa stem and uh, definitely wala sa roots. So, of course, paano kumakalat itong disease na ito? May vector ba? Presence of vector? So, insect? Um, ang man ay pwedeng vector din ng uh, pagkalat ng uh, white spot. And then, contaminated field equipment of, or, or tools, contaminated tools na pwedeng ginamit dun sa insected plant at gagamitin sa healthy corn plant. And then, improper crop production practices na pag-iwan doon sa infected plant debris na pwedeng maging source ng, in, uh, maging source ng um, disease or inoculum for uh, sa pag-spread uh, or pagkakaroon ng disease ng ibang mga healthy plants. So, in terms of vector, um, okay, I have found an article on yung transmission ng P. ananatis. So, this was published recently lang 2021 at Crop Protection Journal. They found out that Western corn rootworm or WCR is an insect vector of the bacteria. So here is the photo of the adult of WCR and then the, lar and then the larval, larval stage of WCR. But in, in this article they used, in this study, they used the adult stage for that transmission test. So, ano naman ang mga favorable environmental conditions to promote this um, disease at sa pag-spread nito? If there is high rainfall and moderate temperature, and kapag ang humidity level ay above 70%, and at night time, temperature ay mas mataas sa 14 degrees. So, since bacteria ito, favorable talaga kapag maulan at mataas ang humidity. Okay, so ano ang mga um, available management strategies? So as we can see here, meron na bang resistant cultivar and as of now, ay wala pa dahil bago itong disease na ito din. So meron na bang, um, as for the chemical control, meron bang registered bactericide? 
sa FBA as I check it, walang walang pagpagtiricize available for this um, um, disease. Um, fungicide, of course, kapag may presence ng fungal infection or the disease uh, complex ito, pwedeng gumamit naman ko said, as fungicide. Okay? Biological control, and as of now, wala pa din talaga nag-aaral regarding ito. But actually, sa sa aming project, ito yung aming isang tinitingnan. So, yung mga commercially available na uh, biocon products. So, ano ang natitirang pwede natin gawin? For the cultural control, of course, um, yung removal ng infected crop residue to reduce yung inoculum. And then, crop rotation and also yung cultivation of corn during periods that are unfavorable for disease development. So, um, both area na medyo elevated, um, iwasan natin magtanim ng corn kung maulan or yung given yung favorable uh, condition kanina na nabanggit natin. Favorable environmental condition. So, So lastly, ito na yung actually last um, um, topic or part ng aking presentation. Ano ng role natin knowing that this disease is a potential transboundary disease ng corn. So for us, iba't ibang participants natin, may, may meron tayo from LGU, from different government offices, nakita may taga BPI, may mga students, may mga instructors, professors, researchers, um, and from LGU, so to build awareness about the disease, its importance, and a new status ng, ng disease na ito. And also, of course, to, to have yung studies pa for madami pang kailangan gawin for, for this pathogen and for the disease. And uh, of course, part ng disease pyramid, disease spread ay ang tao. So let us not be part of the disease. Uh, spread na uh, kakalad pa itong sakit na ito. And of course, we appreciate kung if you notice this disease, white spot ng corn, actually hindi lang white spot ng corn but all other diseases, um, kindly report to your municipal or provincial agriculturist or sa RCPC, ngayon ay RCPMC, sa BPI, in your area or to us at NCPC. You can message us sa uh, Facebook page or can you can send us email sa amin pong uh, uh, email address. So, I just want to end this presentation by this uh, quote. Preventing outbreaks is always better than scrambling to find a cure. A more elaborative version of preventing is better than cure. So, again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for listening. God bless and keep safe always. Maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Joy. Ibinahagi po sa atin ni Ma'am Joy ang isa sa mga potential transboundary disease ng mais na tinatawag na white spot. Ito po ay isang complex disease na ang uh, causal agent ay bacterial pathogen na i-share din po sa atin ni uh, Ma'am Joy ang tungkol sa biology, symptom at kung paano i-manage ang sakit na ito. Muli, maraming salamat, Ma'am Joy. Again, let me acknowledge some of our participants who are watching from uh, DOST Region 9 in Sambuanga del Sur. We also have participants from uh, De La Salle Araneta University, from Apayao State College, and uh, from Baguio and Oriental Mindoro. So meron din po tayong uh, mga sumusubaybay sa Facebook. I think they are around 40. So maraming salamat po sa inyo. Okay. Muli po, maraming uh, salamat sa ating mga speakers. Tunay po na siksik sa impormasyon ng inyong mga naibahagi ukol sa mga transboundary diseases ng kasaba, kakao, at corn o trisis. Sigurado akong maraming natutunan ng ating mga participants at maaari nilang magamit ang mga impormasyon na inyong ibinahagi. Paalala po na kung nga nais nyo pong makatanggap ng e-certificates, mangyaring po nan po lamang ang evaluation form na kasalukuyang isinishare sa inyong mga screen. At 
makikita nyo rin po ang link ng evaluation form na isashare ng aming team sa chat boxes ng Zoom, Facebook at YouTube. Okay. Uh, kanina po may mga ano no may mga pumapasok na pong mga questions from our participants and uh, right now pwede niyo na pong i-send ang inyong mga questions by uh, uh, Q&A button ng Zoom sa chat at uh, comment section ng uh, Facebook at YouTube at sisimulan na po natin ang question and answer at uh, para po tulungan tayo na i-facilitate ang ating question and answer Tatawagin ko po ang isa sa mga bumubuo ng aming webinar team ngayong araw na si Miss Romaline Limpiada. Miss Roma? Good morning po. Salamat Sir Randy at salamat din po sa ating pong tatlong resource speakers sa kanilang pagbabahagi ng kanilang kaalaman tungkol sa mga transboundary diseases sa cassava, cacao, and corn. So sa ating pong mga sumusubaybay sa Zoom, YouTube at Facebook, magandang magandang umaga po. Kung kayo po ay may mga katanungan pa na hindi nyo pa po na i-raise, pwede nyo na po itong ilagay sa ating Q&A uh, chat box or sa comment section po ng Facebook at YouTube. And kasama po pala natin ngayon ang mga uh, webinar, part po ng ating webinar team na sina Miss Jane De Rojas, si Miss Joanne Robles, Miss Donna V. Ramirez, and Miss Julian De Chavez sa paggala po or pag-consolidate ng ating pong mga questions. Yan. So para simulan po ang ating pong mga Um, questions, ay basahin ko po muna yung ibang mga comments. Yan. So, for Mr. Ray Santos, ito po yung comment niya. Nice to be part of this webinar. Thanks. Thank you rin po, Sir Ray. And from Ms. Paz Kutamora Chan, sabi po niya, thank you Dr. Pinili for the helpful information. So, para po sa ating unang katanungan, para po ito kay Dr. Pinili, alam ko ready na po yung mga Uh, resource speakers po natin. For the first question po ay galing po kay Miss Merle Palakpak na nasa Zoom. Ano ang recommended measures to prevent the movement of virus to different areas within the Philippines? Doc Marie? Okay, thank you for that uh, question coming from Ma'am Merle. Actually, yun yung isa sa mga objectives ng, one of the objectives ng R4D for transboundary pests and diseases is to capacitate our uh, technical staff not only from the regional level, but up to the provincial level. Yun yung call ni uh, Secretary Dar. That's why, uh, in doing so, we have to strengthen our virus indexing facilities as well as our staff. So, bago natin ma-reach yun, we have to improve more of our diagnostic system bago natin makapacitate yung ating mga technical staff. And aside from that, um, isa din na... Uh, Uh, measure to prevent movement is if we can ensure virus-free planting materials. So, doon din papasok yung uh, uh, malakas sa virus indexing facilities and uh, technical people. And also, um, knowing how those virus diseases can be transmitted. So, doon naman papasok yung importance ng mga insect vectors. So, yung mga basic knowledge on transmission, if it is state-born or if it is mechanically transmitted, ay napaka-importante. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Marie. Uh, for Sir Freddy naman po, uh, may katanungan po for, from Miss Catherine Mediodia, Balura na nasa Zoom. What are those cacao varieties that are resistant to pests and diseases? So may na-mention po kayo kanina ng mga resistant. Ano daw po kaya yun? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, question. So as of the moment, uh, very limited pa rin yung ating information regarding the level of resistance or tolerance sa mga available uh, clones natin. Since uh, yung uh, focus uh, in the... In the breeding programs ngayon is more on the development of high yielding varieties for our clones. So uh, this is a good uh, opportunity also para sa ating uh, mga plant pathologists and uh, breeders to work on uh, the identification kung ano yung mga uh, clones natin na with uh, this degree of resistance sa mga specific uh, diseases or plant pests po. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sir Freddy. Um, 
Meron din pong comment for Ms. Joy Mendoza. Thank you, Ms. Joy, for the relevant information on porn diseases. And for our next question naman po, para po kay Doc Marie Pinili. This is from Ms. Karen Barandok Alviar na nasa Facebook. Aside from using antibiotic like streptomycin, what other management strategies can you advise or cassava farmers to prevent proliferation of CPD? Private companies who rent vast farms for cassava planting sometimes would never reveal the source of plant cuttings distributed to them. Can the R RCPC and regional agricultural offices require the big industries for information like plant cutting resources? Okay, thank you sa question. Actually, um, so far, ang nire-recommend pa lang is yung use ng streptomycin or pull it up your guard. Um, but basically, yun na yung nakikita namin problem when we visited the uh, area sa Isabela na nag-start na siya mag-develop ng symptom even if it's treated with streptomycin. So, yung isang magandang um, measure is no tingnan natin talaga kung ano yung mga symptoms. Like yung pinakita ko niya sa presentation, if you're uncertain with the above ground symptom, yung dumiliit yung dahon or something, uh, you can look at yung mga stem cuttings kung present yung uh, necrosis doon sa phloem. So yun, that's one indicator. Kasi sa ngayon, wala pa din, aside from top view guard, is wala pa din talagang uh, na-validate or na-evaluate na other measures aside from yung sa top view guard. So ensuring clean planting materials just by looking at yung sa symptoms, yung basic symptoms ng CWB. Yeah. Thank you, Doc Marie. Um, for Sir Freddy naman po, meron po tayong question. Uh, we, from Mr. Ray Santos na nasa Zoom, with the VSD threats, does DA or other concerned agencies carried out strict screening to reduce spreading of these diseases. This disease is to other location, provinces, region. As what we observe now, most nursery suppliers, especially from Mindanao, have free flow movement of seedlings to other places as far as Luzon. How could we reduce this threat, Sir Freddy? Uh, thank you, Sir Ray, for that uh, question. Uh, sure, I agree with you that uh, strict screening of seedlings uh, should be implemented sa mga, uh, lalo na sa mga suppliers natin uh, from Mindanao to minimize nga yung long-distance movement ng ating uh, VSD, uh, lalo na ngayon na nag-expand ang ating production areas, uh, not just from in Mindanao, but uh, across the country. So I, I cannot speak in behalf ng uh, BPI regarding yung... Uh, uh, strict screening nila or protocol but uh, currently uh, very limited pa rin ang detection system natin for VSD and uh, uh, as of the moment under the DA bar uh, program we are working on improving the detection system for VSD with the use of uh, gene specific primers and uh, other molecular markers to help yung ating uh, BPI for uh, monitoring and uh, quarantine of our uh, cacao seedlings. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Roma. Thank you, Sir Freddy. Ngayon naman po for um, Miss Joy. Uh, this is from Sir Narceo Bahet na nasa Facebook. Sabi po niya, Pan Pantoeya Ana Maria or Erwinia Stewart TE and it differently affects sweet corn from field corn. Also at ISHI, there's been a consideration that it is a seed uh, transmitted. Have you guys at NCPC co coordinated with the BPI and PQS among others? So, yun po yung comment po ni sir. It's Joy. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that information, sir. Bahit. As of now, Mamari, gusto niyo po ba sagutin? Sumasagot din ako ng question dun sa Q&A chat box. Anyway, uh, in terms of coordination when it comes to white spot of corn, uh, actually, sa Bukid noon pa lang, sa Nomiark pa lang kami nakikipag, uh, yung, yun pa lang ang coordination. So, sa BPI PQ, eh, so far, wala pa. Kasi nga, uh, nag-start tayo doon sa Pantawea Ananatis na initially na, na isolate and then, hindi pa din napupush through yung pathogenicity kasi nga very restricted yung pagkakandak ng white spot of corn. Doon lang talaga namin gusto i-conduct sa bukid na kasi baka siya kumalat. 
So, welcome naman ang ang NCPC for uh, collaboration kung merong uh, uh, added info from PIPQ. Thank you, Thank you po, Doc Marie. Uh, next question po, from Ms. Karen Alviar. What is the status of CPD in the country at present? Do we still advise farmers to use antibiotic to manage CPD? Any vectors identified already? Okay, when it comes to CWB, um, status. You know, like based on my presentation, kung saan merong kasaba growing areas, ay nakikita na talaga natin na may CWB. So, do we need to advise uh, to use streptomycin? Uh, hindi ko masasagot yan because we're still evaluating kung ano talaga yung effect ng ng streptomycin ngayon under field condition. So, yun pa yung binavalidate if yung streptomycin ba ay, or CWB ay nag-create na talaga ng resistance to streptomycin. Yun yung part din siya noong ongoing project. And uh, for the next question is, ano nga yun? Uh, vector. Okay, kung naka-identify ng vector, very tricky kasi ang phytoplasma. Uh, doon sa project namin with with IPB, um, naka-detect kami ng phytoplasma from millibugs. Parang long long tail millibugs pa yun. Nakalimutan ko yung species eh. Medyo mahaba yung name. But it's from millibugs. And then, uh, meron akong estudyante na mag-work on transmission. So we will be looking at yung possibility ng, ng uh, as vector ng phytoplasma using lip hoppers kasi madami din lip hoppers sa sa kasaba. So yun pa yung mga nakahang na na uh, information that we need to validate. Thank you. Yan, thank you po, Dong Marie. So may comment po from me from Ms. Merle Palakpak. Um, I think it is high time that the NCPC group coordinate with quarantine of BPI for these diseases since there is continuous movement of planting materials. May comment po ba ang mga resource speakers po natin on this? Yes. Uh, like I mentioned, maybe it's student from BPI PQ. So we will be working uh, on CWB, in-depth study on CWB. Yeah. For other diseases, yes, open naman ang National Crop Protection Center. Thank you po. For Ms. Joy, are there specific um, corn varieties, varieties susceptible to white spot disease? This is from Ms. Lilia Portales na nasa Zoom po. Hi, Dr. Portales. As of the moment, ay wala pa pong report or study regarding sa susceptibility um, ng corn varieties na available po sa atin ngayon. So, yeah, marami po pong kailangan gawin for, for this uh, disease. So, yun po. Thank um, you. May I add, add ko lang doon sa, sa tanong ni, ni Ma'am Lilia Portales. Actually, nung nagpunta kami sa Bukid noon, uh, when it comes to susceptibility ng white spot uh, of corn, uh, even native varieties, meron na din eh, infection. So from hybrids to uh, native varieties. So yun, marami pang kailangan gawin. And uh, wala pa ding screening for resistance kasi nga, hindi pa ganun ka-establish din yung uh, pathogenicity niya. Thank you, Doc Marie. Thank you, Ma'am Joy. Uh, this uh, next, next question naman po ay para kay Sir Freddy. From Felix John Refamons, um, how serious is cacao VSD in terms of ability to contribute to yield loss? Uh, thank you uh, for that uh, question. So, uh, compared sa ating mga padrat, VSD is a serious threat in terms of yield uh, reduction since it can kill yung uh, seedlings uh, when infection occurs at the seedling stage. And also, uh, it can uh, increase kill yung whole plant if not uh, managed well. And with the death ng ating uh, cacao plants, uh, wala tayong mga harvest and uh, we are uh, forced to replant itong mga uh, cacao plants natin. So uh, sabi kong unlike sa padrat na uh, limited sa uh, 
uh, fruit lang ang kanyang infection, uh, we can still harvest uh, from our cacao, cacao tree uh, and uh, uh, not just uh, other cacao plants, but uh, uh, sa uh, coming season pa, makaka-harvest pa rin po tayo. Thank you. Yan. Thank you, Sir Freddy. So medyo limited po yung ating time. Konti na lang po ating i-accept po na question. Um, from Sir Refamonte po ulit, sabi po niya, do you accept samples for molecular detection of cacao VSD? How much would it cost? Uh, thank you, Sir, for that uh, question. Uh, uh, as of the moment, Sir, uh, hindi pa kami nagsuservice sa NCPC uh, ng mga samples for for uh, payment lalo na pag ito ay madami pero pag uh, onti lang naman uh, i think uh, our laboratory can uh, cater po sir depende po doon sa uh, volume or number ng inyong uh, plant samples po thank you okay uh, i think last two na po ito for dr pinili what are the recommended measures to prevent spread of cassava which is broom in the philippines have you considered hot water treatment for the diseased planting materials Doc Marie? Okay, I think nasagot ko yan doon sa chat box. Ano? Anyway, uh, yung hot water treatment ay isa sa mga recommendations ng aming mga reviewers, project project reviewers namin. And uh, isa yun sa mga consider ng, ng project to test whether it will work to, to lessen the multiplication of phytoplasma. Aside from yung tinitignan namin na potential uh, BCA for CWB as an alternative to uh, streptomycin. So, ongoing po yun. Uh, nasa, kumaga, nasa pipeline namin yung pagtetest ng hot water treatment. Uh, Doc Marie, what, uh, what is the vector doko for CW, CDW? Ah, okay. Doon sa vector, sabi ko nga, very fragmented yung data natin dyan eh. Kasi may harap siyang pag-aralan. But uh, reports ab abroad, na prove nila na yung may poppers ay potential vector kasi yun yung mga uh, flow and feeding insects. But dito sa Philippines, uh, hindi pa kami nakaka-detect ng phytoplasma from lip hoppers but instead sa millibugs. So yun pa yung for uh, validation. Thank you. Uh, Doc Marie, um, you mentioned in your pre presentation about the suspected mosaic disease in cassava. Is there any update on its identification? Okay, it's still ongoing. Inaantay lang namin yung aming primers para ma-validate if it's really kasaba mosaic virus. Kasi uh, if you look at the list ng mga diseases, virus diseases na kasaba, napakadami niya, more than five types of ano, five different types ng mosaic diseases sa kasaba. So sana hindi siya yung ano, African kasaba mosaic virus disease. Thank you. And thank you po, Dr. Marie. So last na po, uh... Dahil wala na pong oras, from Dr. Bahet, um, JF Belidion has done substantial basic studies on cacao VSD. What gaps are there to studies to come up with an effective management strategy? Thank you, Sir Bahet. Ah, okay. Uh... Hi sir, uh, good morning po. So uh, based on the results ni na uh, ni na uh, Sir Jani, so uh, we have this uh, survey across uh, the country and of course yung uh, development ng mga uh, markers also for uh, detection ng ating uh, VSD. So probably in terms of uh, management, uh, these uh, primers uh, since they were uh, they were able to sequence yung ating uh, CT genome. Uh, this could be used uh, to fast track yung mga uh, ating mga detection system also para sa uh, identification or occurrence ng ating uh, DSD sa mga planting materials since uh, very crucial yung ating planting materials uh, lalo na ngayong uh, expansion ng cacao since ito ay nanggagaling lang sa Mindanao. So based on our survey, uh, we were able also to uh, isolate itong VSD sa mga planting materials specifically sa Bicol region. So, I think uh ayun nga based sa kanilang mga outputs, we can uh generate or we can use yung mga data na nagamit nila which is uh, we are actually doing in our project uh, ngayon with uh, DA bar in collaboration with uh, uh Sir Jani Balijon sa improvement ng uh, detection system po. Thank you, sir. 
Muli, marami pong salamat sa ating pong mga resource speakers sa kanila pong pag-share at pagsagot sa mga katanungan po na ating pong mga participants. At marami din pong salamat sa ating mga participants sa inyo pong aktibong pakikilahok sa ating pong um, webinar na ito. Alam ko po marami pa pong mga tanong na na-erase uh, pero kulang na po tayo sa oras. So, uh, isend yun na lamang po ang inyong katanungan sa ncpc.uplb at up.edu.ph at kayo po ay sasagutin po na ating pong mga resource speakers. Muli maraming salamat sa aking pong mga kasama uh, sa segment na ito. Uh, kay Miss Julie, Miss Donna V, Miss Joanne, Miss Jane. At yan. Thank you again sa mga resource speakers and to our participants. Um, binabalik ko na po kayo sa ating pong MC. Sir Randy. Maraming salamat Miss Roma. At uh, muli po maraming salamat sa ating mga speakers sa pagbabahagi ng kaalaman at pagsagot sa mga katanungan mula sa ating mga participants. Uulitin ko po, huwag po tayong mag-alala at paniguradong ikakala po ng aming team ang inyong mga katanungan at uh, maaari din po kayong uh, mag-message sa aming FB page o kaya ay mag-email sa ncpc.uplb at up.edu.ph. Again, ncpc.uplb at up.edu.ph. Muli pong paalala para sa mga nagnanais na makatanggap ng e-certificates para sa ating webinar ngayong araw, maaari lamang po na sagutan ng evaluation form. Ang link po ay uh, isi-share po natin muli. Okay, ayan na po yung link para sa ating evaluation form. At uh, para po sa panghuling bahagi ng ating programa, tayo po ay bibigyan ng mensahe ng aming Deputy Director na si Ms. April Albiar. Ma'am April? Hello everyone, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Naluto na po tayo sa huling bahagi ng ating NCPC Anniversary Webinar Series bilang bahagi ng selebrasyon ng ika-45 anibersaryo ng National Crop Protection Center. Una po, nagpapasalamat po kami sa mga galing nating plant pathologists na sina Doc Marie, Sir Freddy at Ma'am Joy bilang nagsilbing resource speaker sa umagang ito at binahagi ang kanilang kaalaman tungkol sa iba't ibang sakit ng kasaba, kakao at corn at kung paano nga mga sakit na ito ay pamamahalaan kung at kung paano po ito masusupi. Taos puso po nagpapasalamat ang NCPC sa pangunguna ng aming director, Director Melvin Embuenga, sa inyong lahat na nakasama namin mula sa una hanggang sa huling episode ng aming webinar series. Sana po ang inyong mga napakinggan mula sa aming mga webinar ay nagsilbing instrumento upang mapaganda niyo po ang inyong mga pananim at makadagdag po sa inyong mga kaalaman. Batid po namin na may mga katanungan po kayo na hindi namin nabigyan ng kasagutan or may mga paksa po na hindi namin natalakay. Ang NCPC po ay bukas sa inyong mga katanungan. Meron po kaming plant health clinic na handang tumulong sa inyong mga problema. Ngunit dahil po sa kinakaharap nating sitwasyon ngayon ay hindi po kami tumatanggap ng, ng sino mang bisita sa aming tanggapan. Ngunit maaari nyo po ipadala ang inyong mga katanungan sa aming Facebook. Facebook page or email niyo po kami sa aming email address. At sisiguraduhin po namin na ibibigay po namin ang lahat ng aming makakayanan upang kayo ay matulungan. Ang webinar series na ito po ay hindi rin may sasakatuparan may sasakatuparan kundi sa pagtyatsaga, pagpupuyat at paghihirap ng ating mga kasama sa NCPC. Maraming salamat sa NCPC webinar team sa pangunguna ni Mr. Jasper Sarmiento at sa ating NCPC Extension Team sa pangunguna ni Ms. Romaline Limpiada sa kanilang kauspusong pagtatrabaho para po maihatid sa inyo mga kabuluhang webinar na ito. At nagpapasalamat din po kami sa aming Dean, Dean LPJO M. Agvisit Jr. at sa CAPS Extension Team sa pamumuno po ni Dr. Bambi Kawili sa kanilang pagtulong po upang maihatid po namin ang mga webinar na ito by Zoom. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat na nakasama namin. Isang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat at pagpalain po tayo ng Panginoon. Maraming salamat, Ma'am April. 
Uh, before we end, uh, gusto ko lamang pong i-announce yung mga nanalo sa aming uh, mobile photography contest na ginam- ginanap last week. Uh, congratulations po sa mga sumusunod. Congratulations kay uh, Mr. Ronel Birunes ng Lupao Neba Isiha. Siya po ang nanalo sa insect category. Congratulations din po kay uh, Mr. JB Bruno mula sa Science City of Munoz, Nueva Ecija para sa Human Stop Crop Protection at Weeds category. At uh, congratulations din kay Ms. Joby Jane Supan mula Upi Maguindanao para sa Plant Diseases category. Muli po, congratulations sa inyong lahat. At ngayon po ay uh, gusto ko pong pasalamatan ang uh, bumubuo ng NCPC Seminar Series Committee sa pangunan ni Mr. Jasper Sarmiento. Maraming uh, salamat din po kay Ms. Rachel na tumulong sa aming uh, webinar series simula episode 1 hanggang episode 4. Okay? At para po sa mga latest updates mula sa aming center, maaari po kayong mag-like, mag-subscribe at follow sa aming FB page at YouTube channel. Ako po si Randolph Candano and in behalf of the NCPC Webinar Series Team, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagdalo ngayong araw, mabuhay po kayo.